There we go. Now we're ready to go. Can you fix the orientation of the Kassirian? Sorry, on uh, streaming on TikTok too. Um, if I do that, it, it gets really, it gets really weird. Like if I flip it this way, I, it was like, maybe that's not too bad there. That's probably not too bad for you on TikTok. I gotta scoot it back a little bit. Um, but that might work. So, hey everyone, welcome to uh, today's live stream. I'm going to throw this into my Fork It podcast, uh, my Fork It playlist, because they were Friday live streams I was doing. And, and it's mainly around open source, uh, that podcast. It was focused on how to do things with open source. Uh, and this is kind of an open source topic uh, today, because we're talking about the CNCF landscape, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's Cloud Native Landscape. And if you've ever seen the picture of the landscape, um, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead and get my other screen up and ready. Um, L.cncf.io. Let's pull this into the live stream here. That's not the outline I want. I want this one. We're going to go there. Okay, so this is the the picture that everyone's kind of used to. I mean, it's actually the interactive one. This is L.cncf.io. Um, and this is like all the all the stuff. But if I go over here, actually, I think I already downloaded it. Let's get it again. Let's go to the PDF. This is, yeah, I already had it downloaded. This is probably, oh, I can't even zoom out enough to see it all. Uh, this is the picture that a lot of people are kind of used to. And this is like, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, and someone asked me, hey, if I'm an outsider, can you can you talk about it? Can you show me what this stuff means like how i don't even know how to orient myself in this landscape because the landscape is just like you're looking at like the world you're seeing what is what does the horizon look like and this is a a big collection of things and so it's hard to kind of go about and reason and i will show you hold on a second This is the old landscape. Uh, I can't hold it all the way. I can't hold it up enough for the camera. But like that's the landscape from a few years ago. Uh, I printed it out, and uh, and it's you know it's it's big, but it's not as big as it is today. So um, the landscape has definitely grown, and we're gonna walk through some of it. Um, the first place, and the way I'm gonna walk through it here is I actually have if I can switch my screen somewhere. Here it is. Uh, so I'm projecting here my my iPad so I can uh, walk through this and show you all um, what this what the stuff is like. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger and erase that. There we go. So, yeah, we can we can just walk through and show you what it is. And the first thing I actually want to show you is here in this big section in the middle of this, like. This entire section here uh, is like in this landscape view is like a third of the landscape. Um, and this whole thing is members. Uh, if you zoom in here, you have CNCF members here and it says uh, different tiers. So it's like all CNCF members. You have platinum, gold, silver, uh, end user, end user supporter, uh, nonprofit academic. So these are all people, these are all just like company logos. This is not projects. These aren't, things that like you need to necessarily know about. These are just people that fund the CNCF because the CNCF is part of the Linux Foundation and and it costs money to have people like work at a company. <laughs> if you didn't know that, <laughs> sorry to spoil the news. Um, sometimes it costs money. And so one of the things about the CNCF, so you look here, I'm eating some Starburst jelly beans, which are my favorite jelly beans. So I'm sorry if I'm going to, I'm just going to chew and walk through this. Um, these are listed in, in alphabetical order. So let's be a little bit fair, right? So if I, if triple a becomes a platinum member, they get, they get this first spot, um, because that's how you play the game. And, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 platinum sponsors. Uh, most of those are, are cloud providers in some sense, or at least infrastructure providers. Uh, but what does that mean? What does that mean for a 13 infrastructure providers to be part of platinum tier? And so if we go over to the CNCF landscape, they have this CNCF CF about join. And you see your memberships, whoops, I scrolled there by accident, membership to suit your orientation. 
academic nonprofit, silver, gold, platinum tiers. These are, this is just how this works. And right down here, you get how much money it is. Like you can see how much money they're paying. So all those platinum, how would you say 13 or whatever, $370,000 per year with a three year contract. Um, and they get things like a board seat on the govern governing board. So they get a literally a seat at the table to say what the CNCF should be focusing on. So they're paying $1.1 million uh, for three years to have a, a seat. Um, they also get things like a keynote uh, at, at KubeCon. There's like a big conference that happens. Um, they get all of this stuff. And so uh, including all the stuff in the back, right? But that's what you get when you're a platinum sponsor. So those 13 or so people um, are that. So the gold sponsors here are $120,000 every year. Uh, to to basically be be mentioned uh, keynote mention upon joining um, these are like you know you don't get as many perks um, and then all this silver has like a whole other like pricing scale and it's like depending on how many people work there what you get so if I switch back here I'm not gonna I'm not gonna count all those but man oh man. This is all silver right here. All, all there in the middle is silver sponsors for CNCF. So that's how that works. FYI, uh, in case you did not know, um, that is that is a big bulk of what the landscape is today. Um, and even if we go down here, um, where was it? No, I don't want to go on those those yet. No, I'm not gonna focus on those distributions. Let's not let's not go there yet. Um, here, this is this is the part I was looking for. Certified service? No, that's not it. Training partners. This is the other one. This is the other one I was looking at. These are like, hey, these people are companies that will train you. This whole this whole band here of of what we're reviewing. Let's just color it red so we just we know we covered that portion. So a lot of this stuff again is just these aren't projects. These aren't things you have to know. So like this whole section here is just people that pay CNCF money or are part of the foundation membership in some way. End users don't usually have to pay. Um, but yeah, this is all stuff we've covered. This top piece is kind of what the original landscape was. And this is like the technologies that are involved with how the CNCF works or how you might want to use something that's quote unquote cloud native. And so we, we can look at these sections now in a little more detail. And I'm going to start with erasing that line I just put in there. Um, where's the orchestration and management? Uh, because this is kind of what people think of when they think of the cloud native, the CNCF um, is just, let's pick a different color. Um, let's go with whatever this color is. Um, just this piece here, scheduling and orchestration. And really like the first one here was Kubernetes. And, and I don't know why I'm blocking it out now so you can't see it, but that's fine. Kubernetes was kind of the the reason this all started was, was like, hey, we need to uh, like have a, a neutral place for this software that's going to manage containers. And how does that work? And and Kubernetes was was put into a neutral body so that multiple companies could work on this thing. People know that there's a Kubernetes documentary. Go go watch it. It's pretty good. Goes into some of that history. And I'll also note here, just as we're going through this. These things in big boxes, I gotta make this smaller now. These big boxes are part of like CNCF hosted projects. They have different tiers. Incubating is one. Uh, graduated is another one. They're tiers of like, how mature is this project? How long has it been around? How many people work on it? How safe is it to adopt kind of thing? All these tiny ones, all these little ones, are just projects that like wanted to mention. They're like, hey, by the way, we're, we're here, we exist. No affiliation, no uh, notice of like, we have any sort of maturity or multiple cloud providers or anything like that. Just, hey, by the way, this is a project that's here. You can throw anything up there. Who are the big dogs in the cloud? Uh, big dogs in the cloud are, are pretty much all of the people um, that like pay money. Um, <laughs> we were just going over that, like the, the, the platinum sponsors, those are like, I mean, if, if you're looking at CNCF, they're the people that literally run 
the organization. So if they're if they're paying the money, they have the seat at the table. They're the ones that could uh, kind of control the conversation. That's all I kind of answer that big dog uh, who's who's the people if you're talking about technologies and projects um, usually those are kind of the graduated things those are the things that have been around for a while and people know about or they use in production um, and those are oftentimes these these graduated uh, envoys a graduated project but like envoy is a special one because it's like oh it's an implementation detail for another project so uh, you're using it likely in some way but it's not a necessity in the in fact that you're not like necessarily interfacing with it. So I don't think I do this on another layer and I should have, because that's gonna make it a pain to try to erase this stuff. And I think if I erase this now, it's gonna erase the whole thing, isn't it? Well, I'm on the wrong layer now. Ha, huh. yep, I, that's not what I want. Oh, well, we'll go on this layer now. The landscape is at l.cncf.io. So you can just go down that. They have an interactive one. Um, this one, I just downloaded the PDF and we're just marking it up. So this whole section here, for, again, for orchestration, this section is all about like how things happen uh, on your behalf. The uh, containers get put on machines, infrastructure gets spun up um, and down. If we look at some of these I know, some of these I don't know. Um, uh, so like, Crossplane here, this is like orchestrating infrastructure. It puts stuff into Kubernetes, but it's the inf it like provisions other things. It's not running, it's not, it doesn't care about the containers. Kubernetes handles the containers. Um, obviously, Kubernetes handles containers. Uh, Knative and Keda are like uh, almost like a serverless. They're, they're, they, you, they try to make it so that containers are more ephemeral um, in some ways. And they have like Knative has different parts of that. They have a serving interface. Um, uh, Cloud Run is built on the Knative APIs. And so that's like one of those things that just gets adopted. Volcano is for like batch jobs. It's a, like a big batch job scheduler and people understand how batch jobs work. If we go in here and look at these little tiny projects in here, they're all going to do something specific. Um, so like Nomad is HashiCorp's container scheduler. And it's been around for a long time. And it's very a very good scheduler. It, it can run really well. And, and it's not part of the CNCF. It is a different thing. It is it, so that's why it's not the big box. Same with Docker Swarm. Docker Swarm can perfectly schedule your containers depending on your needs, and and it's here and it's available. And it, it's just these little projects are showing that off. Uh, things like KCP is like a newer one, and it's like a virtual Kubernetes API. Does it actually do any orchestration? Uh, no, because it's not handling workloads, but it gives you the API to do other orchestration. So that's kind of this. This section here, which is what most people think of as this cloud native uh, interface or or landscape, is really that orchestration piece. Let's look down. Uh, one, let's just go one layer down here to a service proxy. Service proxy uh, is a is is also called a service mesh in some ways, but like a proxy is just like a generic term for like a load balancer. <laughs> it's like you have reverse proxy, you can have a, a client side load balancer, a service side load balancer, you can have a service mesh, you can have all these things that are basically just like we route traffic, we take traffic and we route it somewhere. Where they sit in the stack, how close to the application, how close to the user, uh, all depends. And some of them are just web servers that have functionality. Others tightly integrate to Kubernetes, all sorts of stuff. So service proxy is kind of this generic term of like, we're routing traffic to an app maybe. Um, and you can do that with something like Envoy because um, service mesh would be one layer above the proxy. It was like service mesh is the orchestration of proxies, just like a, a or scheduling orchestration is one layer above containers. So we have these proxies here. Envoy is a proxy. Uh, it came out of Lyft, built in C++, uh, really popular. Contour, um, honestly, I don't remember where Contour came out of. Uh, someone might remember. Someone might, let me know if you remember where Contour came out. It looks like there was an interactive landscape online. Exactly, Matt. You can go there and like poke at all the stuff and you can like filter all these things, filter how old they are, if they're graduated, if they're part of CNCF, if they're not. Lots of stuff there. So like HA proxy has been around a long time before Kubernetes, right? This isn't a Kubernetes thing. This isn't a container thing, Nginx. Zool out of Netflix. 
Um, these didn't use Kubernetes to begin with. They're just reverse proxies. API gateway. This is like uh, a, a weird term uh, in the fact that API gateway also exists in other things like AWS has an API gateway as a service, which is a thing that exists in front of Lambda, um, but can also be used in other, other situations. API gateway in this case is meaning specifically something in front of Kubernetes because Kubernetes has a gateway object, which is replacing ingress or which has replaced ingress. And API gateway uh, is, is like what solves, what, what else can I deploy to route traffic into my cluster? Um, sort of that uh, north south traffic. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Nope. Oh, almost. Okay. Allergies are fun. So um, API gateway is really is, is mostly about that north south uh, traffic because it's not the east west traffic. It's not the things inside the cluster or between your internal services. This is like we need to get stuff out to a customer. Um, so like ngrok. Ngrok is a good example. Again, no, nothing to do with Kubernetes. It's just a way to export something to some external thing and route traffic into it. And I can do that from my my laptop, my doing developments. Um, but there are some things here like glue, um, which is kind of both. Like it, glue is probably going to show up in two places. It's probably going to show up here and probably show up in a uh, service mesh uh, because there are some of these things that, that overlap. Speaking of which, there's a service mesh section. Um, is glue in here? I was wrong. I mean, I think there might be a requirement that you're only in one section and you might just like say, this is the one uh, that I stay in um, because otherwise you're just like, I'm in all of them. And that's probably not a good thing. So I know there were some rules around like where you go in this. Um, so that's probably what they did. So service mesh here is, is the like, how do we orchestrate not the containers, but how we get traffic in and out. So how are we orchestrating the, the service proxies, uh, the things in that last section? Um, and, and Istio and Linkerd are, are the two most common or most popular um, inside of the Kubernetes world. Partially because they work really well with Kubernetes. They were designed for Kubernetes. Other ones like console were designed outside of the Kubernetes stack. Console works amazing in Nomad. It's not, it does work with Kubernetes, but it was originally designed for Nomad and kind of the HashiCorp stack. So uh, you can do it. You can use it there. Uh, traffic um, is, is a service proxy, but traffic mesh is the like orchestration layer of that. So you can have all these service proxies, how we traffic between them. Uh, it, that's how it works. Let's just keep going right along, right along here. Stay in this middle section. Um, remote procedure calls. This is like, this is kind of a weird one because it's just like how, what what's the library layer of like how we call your API? Um, gRPC is is what Kubernetes uses. Um, it came out of Google, and it's weird that that one is like an incubating project because it's like pretty widely used in other things, and it honestly has nothing to do with being CNCF except for the fact that like Kubernetes uses it a lot. <laughs> So how that fits uh, is just because it's kind of used in the other projects. And so it's here as a nor as a neutral place to hold this project. I don't even know what BRPC is. I should look that one up. That looks kind of cool. Um, yeah, a lot of RPC names, uh, SRPC. I don't know what these are, um, but yeah, there are probably other ways of like calling your application, uh, sending traffic instead of like a REST API, it's going to be probably built on top of HTTP2 uh, and, and do something specific. Like gRPC is a binary protocol on HTTP2. And it's just, you don't have to go back and forth with some things. It's just like, here's a bit stream. You go decode that. Starburst jelly beans are really good. I'm just going to point that out because they're my favorite. And they only come around for Easter time. And that makes me sad. Because they should be around all the time. All right. Service discovery, coordination. Um, core DNS is how Kubernetes does it by default. Um, there used to be one called Cube DNS, uh, which was HTTP3. HD3, yeah, you're right. 
not not HTTP two uh, for gRPC. Um, Core DNS is is the like native DNS server inside of Kubernetes. Pretty much everywhere there used to be one called uh, Cube DNS. Cube DNS was basically just like DNS mask with like an etcd backend. <laughs> um, it was kind of uh, kind of funky. Uh, but core DNS is just like a, a, a native go binary, but it's just a DNS server. It's like, hey, we can read all this information from Kubernetes and present it to you as, as DNS entries. I honestly do not know why etcd is here uh, in, in coordination and service discovery, except for that it's a, uh, an etcd, it's a database, it's a distributed database, and it is often used as a way to get um, like uh, consistent writes. Right, because the the way that etcd is used is we have, we have a, a leader, we have followers, and and we make sure that when we write to one, uh, we always get consistent reads. And and so that is like a coordination feature because if if one goes away, you can't write things. Um, it, back in the day, we get like uh, there were things like um, Eureka and Zookeeper. Zookeeper was used inside of Mesos. Um, as their coordination uh, kind of engine. So, but they're they're here. They're available as like this backend. K8GB isn't that the that's the global load balancer? Why that's here? I have no idea. Um, that's weird. Uh, anyways, uh, cloud map is kind of like the AWS native way of like, like having service discovery that's inside of AWS. Um, you call out APIs endpoints to like say, Hey, what, where does this service exist? And it gives you a bunch of, uh, endpoints. So that covers like this whole middle section here. Um, I'm gonna make this big just so I can like forget about it. Um, but that's kind of, that's, that's like. Outside of orchestration, everything else in there is kind of like implementation of like, oh yeah, we we had to have this thing. Um, let's go down lower. And and roughly this like the landscape is kind of laid out to be uh, applications on the top. Like you think of it kind of like an OSI model where it's like, oh, the higher I go, the closer I get to a user, and the lower I go, the more closer I get to infrastructure. So down here at the bottom is probably going to be oh, see, but they have observability down here. I don't know why. Here's provisioning down here, like security and provisioning section. Um, so we'll get to that next, or we'll get to it after storage. This all fits in this runtime category. Let's just change the color because that's what we're doing today. What's the best way to host a database with autoscale? Uh, use a service provider um, is, is my best, uh, would be my, the best way I would say to do it. <laughs> They'll autoscale it for you. Uh, at least they most, some of them can. Um, is this a website? Yes, there is a website for this, uh, l.cncf.io. Um, it stands for landscape. You can also go, it'll probably forward you to landscape.cncf. But L is the short, the short word because we like short things. So under runtime, the first thing we have here is cloud native storage. That pink is too big now. There we go. And this is just different types of storage. Um, like how do you how do you store data? Um, this could be databases, this could be file systems, this could be block storage, this could be uh, self-managed or managed. Um, someone says check out crunchy data for auto scaling database. It's self-managed. Cool. I, I haven't heard of that one. So under runtime here, there's three CNCF projects. Uh, Rook is graduated, uh, two here incubating Longhorn. Longhorn came out of uh, Rancher. I don't remember where CubeFS came from. Um, but all of these, does it go all the way across? Almost all the way across. Wow. This is all storage. Um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of storage. Oh, and I, I clipped on the bottom there and I don't want to cover it up yet. Um, but like there's stuff in here that like there's an IBM logo. What does that mean? I don't know. Like, if you go to the website, you'll interactively be able to see like what projects uh, that actually ties to, but it's just a generic IBM logo. Um, so like in Alibaba, big cloud uh, in China has cloud storage file system, cloud storage CPFS. Um, those are probably either services or open source and they integrate with Kubernetes because Alibaba uses a lot of Kubernetes. Um, so you can, you can use that over there. 
Um, there's a lot of stuff like Kasten is like a backup solution for uh, your your Kubernetes. Uh, Ceph is is a long time uh, clustered file system. Uh, it has nothing to do with Kubernetes except for that fact that you can run it in Kubernetes and and other tools like uh, Rook here uh, implements Ceph. That's how they use they they just like layer on stuff on top of Ceph and they orchestrate it for you. I think I think Rook has other ways to do it, but that was like the the default one for a long time. Um, and then again, it's like MinIO's block storage, MooseFS. MooseFS is one of my favorite file systems as like a, a home lab hobby thing. Really cool semantics around like how it stores files across multiple machines and presents them as a single uh, sort of interface. Uh, man, I, I ran that a long time ago on some machines in my house. No, no Kubernetes, no cloud, no nothing. Just like spun it up to see uh, what it did. And then you get a bunch of like, uh, there's some vendors here, NetApp, Nutanix, Ondat, um, OpenEBS is like a, a EBS-like thing you can self-host inside your cluster, uh, Portworks, um, Gluster is like a high high performance file system. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Vendors here, Hitachi, HP, I don't even know what Robin is. So yeah, a bunch of stuff, all different storage things. I I covered up what what the name of this is, but I can tell it's networking already um, because we have CNI and Cilium, and I'm gonna eat all these Starburst or all these jelly beans in this live stream. This is gonna be bad. Uh, Cilium is these are all network overlays or underlays or or whatever lays you want. Um, in your flavor of networking that allow you to do some networking that's a lower level than a service proxy. This isn't necessarily like application data. This is just like, we need to connect two things. This is like layer two, layer three um, connectivity uh, in the in the OSI model. And so um, things like, the weird thing to me is like Cilium, or, or I'm sorry, uh, CNI here, this is like a spec. This isn't a project like uh, um, container native infrastructure. No, that's my book. Uh, container network interface, um, CNI. And it was really confusing when we called our book CNI. Uh, but container network interface is a spec on how all of these things can tie into Kubernetes. Um, why that spec is an incubating project, I don't know. Uh, but it's here and, and it's part of the CNCF. So it's that's that's it. But Cilium is an implementation of a CNI. So Cilium is like, hey, we, we take that interface and we build stuff on it. Cilium specifically does it mostly with eBPF, um, which is a kernel technology. Um, but you can do it all different ways. You can literally just do it with Bash. Um, Calico uh, is another one that's been around a long time. That one's usually for like um, data centers. If you, if you need things like BGP, I remember Calico was like the first one that was like, oh, cool. Like we support BGP broadcasts. So you can have your networking be broadcast within your broader network because you weren't replacing all of your networking stuff. Uh, it had to exist somewhere. Um, Submariner uh, it was like, it's out of Rancher. It's how you can connect some clusters together. Uh, Cube Router, I remember it was like a, a pretty simple like service exposure of IP addresses. Um, why isovalence here separate? Because isovalent is silly. I don't know. This is another project. If you're on the interactive guide, it's going to tell you what this project is doing. Uh, and then you're going to have plenty of vendors in here, like F5, VMware. Um, there's some generic ones, like, like earlier ones, like Flannel came out of uh, CoreOS. Um, it's still used, but is is um, a little more simplistic, which is could be good or bad. And then container runtimes. This is one of the last pieces of this, how containers are working. Um, we have uh, ContainerD and Cryo, uh, which are two different container runtimes for Kubernetes. Um, I don't even see Docker here, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, like 
it's interesting because Docker implements container D like Docker built container D and then donated it and said like, Hey, this is the thing that we interface with as Docker from uh, the daemon is going to go talk to container D. Uh, so container D is the place that like actually runs your containers or gets interfaces with something. But like in Kubernetes, the kubelet talks directly to container D. Uh, when you're on your laptop or something, you're running Docker commands, you're talking to Docker, which talks to container D. Um, Docker was deprecated as a as a as an integrated runtime, uh, but it is still maintained from the company that now owns that portion of Docker Enterprise, uh, Mirantis. So that you can still get the Docker shim, uh, which is what, how it was commonly uh, referred to, which was like you had Container D, or sorry, you had the kubelets, and you had uh, Container D. And somewhere in there, sometimes the container, sometimes Kubelet would talk directly to container D. If you had Docker, it would use the Docker shim to talk to container D. So you can still get that shim uh, from Mirantis. They'll, they'll happily support you if you want to pay them. Um, but yeah, it's not part of the main project anymore. They wanted everything to shift over to the um, container runtime interface. So there's going to be a bunch of other ones in here that are like, we run containers too. LXD is is a is a container runtime that isn't meant for application containers as we might think today like where there's a single binary that you execute execute lxd uh orchestrates lxc which also has a fork now um which is like you run operating systems you boot an init system and then you kind of you don't virtualize it but it's all in a container um so you can get like more of a full a full like you could run docker inside of lxc you, you can run Docker and Docker, and it's kind of a hack around how you're doing that because you're like, I just mount the, the socket and we're fine. Um, yeah. Uh, Rockets is, is actually, I thought Rocket was deprecated. I don't know why that's on here because um, Rocket came out of CoreOS. Rocket, originally in Kubernetes, there was just Docker. And that's all that was there. And, and CoreOS came around and they built Rocket. And Rocket was kind of the first like challenger to what Docker was doing. It's like, hey, we could simplify all this stuff that Docker does. And, and also early days, like Docker broke all the time. If you upgraded your system, Docker changed APIs and things broke. And then you were kind of in trouble. Rocket was like, hey, we're just going to make this a little more stable. It came out of CoreOS. Um, when um, the network, the container execution or container runtime interface was created, Rocket was mostly like, OK, now we're good. Like, we have an interface now. We don't need to exist anymore. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's that's been deprecated, uh, but it might still exist somewhere. Um, things like uh, Firecracker and Kata containers, these are like different implementations where it's like, hey, we work by using hardware virtualization, um, where it's a container, but uh, it's it uses some other layer uh, be below it in the hardware to uh, virtualize it. See a couple questions. LXD can canonical fork run by Linux containers is called Incus. That's what it's called. Thanks, Matt. Incus is the is the LX is that LXD and LXC because I thought Incus was just LXC. I'm I haven't stayed close to it. Container D, I believe all major cloud providers uses for their Kubernetes services. Yes, absolutely. Container D is the vast majority. Uh, you will see Cryo if you use Red Hat. <laughs> uh, Red Hat likes to own their stack of things, and so they built Cryo. And they will they will tell you all different ways that Cryo is, is superior or different or why it needs to exist. Uh, but really, it's just if you are in the Red Hat world, uh, you're probably going to get Cryo by default. Uh, Gvisor came out of out of Google as like a way to slim down what a container could do. Um, Lima, I believe, is the like local Mac only uh, like Docker replacements. Um, things like virtual kubelets. Again, is this this is container runtime, which is interesting because virtual kubelet is like, hey, we look like a kubelet. We look like a kubelet interface, but we can attach to anything behind us. And so there's all different ways of like what actually runs there. It could be an entire cluster. So I think we covered that bar. I'm gonna have to put these Starburst away from me because I'm gonna eat. I literally will eat that whole thing. It's so good. All right, let's look at security. Incus is the direct fork of LXD and both operate LXD containers. Thanks, Matt. I didn't know the. I, I thought Incus was one layer below. Good to know. How long does it take to learn all these? <laughs> uh, you shouldn't be learning all of these. You should know roughly like where they fit. And that's why we're going over this. That's why we're talking about like the sections. 
I will say that pretty much every section uh, in this landscape, or at least this top third, um, had like a hot moment of of uh, controversy or at least like politics or something. And that's kind of why it exists is like, hey, this is a hot topic. How Someone's going to make money here and push someone else out. And so we need to put something there to make it fair or something. Uh, so let's let's go right because like storage was a big deal for a little while. We like people were like, how does container storage work? How are we going to get container storage uh, here? And like everyone's like, oh, just use the old NFS you have in the back. And I was like, no, that's that's not the way to do it anymore. We have to build new stuff. Um, and in some cases, they're right. In some cases, you don't need it. Um, but it was a bit, very big hot topic. There was lots of VC funding and a lot of things came out of that. Um, security and compliance was absolutely one of those things. <laughs> Uh, all these things just kind of happen as like, hey, where is the VC money going? Where are people interested in? And some of this has happened in cycles as like people's maturity of usage of the tools has kind of come around. They're like, actually, I've got to this point and now I need a new tool. 50 startups come out and say like, here's my project. Go try it. Give me money and I'll keep doing it. <laughs> uh, so security and compliance uh, is a whole section here. I don't know, like this is provisioning. Um, what else is in the section? That's like all security, automation and configuration, key management, container registry. Okay, so this is like stuff under Kubernetes or around Kubernetes. I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it. But this one probably has, it's one of the most like CNCF projects is this whole section here, um, which is which is more than most, even more than container orchestration, right? So it's like Falco is a recent uh, graduate, uh, open policy agents. Um, Tough came out of Docker a long time ago. Um, and they said like, like, are you using it? Maybe it, it shouldn't be something you have to think about. This isn't something, some of these are just like, oh yeah, we it's it's there. Um, like in Toto is like a way of like signing uh, artifacts. Um, but like Cert Manager is, was like a community project out of Oh man, I forgot what company started originally. It wasn't GoDaddy. Uh, it was someone that I wouldn't have expected though. Um, but it just like, it manages certs. Like you need certificates for things. And, and how does that tie into here? Uh, where can you get the graph? The graph is at l.cncf.io. So like, if you look at Falco, well, I went to Eraser, don't want that. If you look at Falco, uh, it is a very different project than Open Policy Agent. Open Policy Agent is about creating policy as code. Uh, and that's how like stuff gets in and out or gets deployed to your cluster or not. Falco is about runtime security, where it looks at the kernel um, calls that are happening from a container to invoke something uh, and say like, hey, is that safe or not? Did someone just, uh, just like start a shell in that container? Maybe they shouldn't have. Um, they can stop that. Um, Key Cloak, Converno, Converno is another like policy agent. Uh, Key Cloak, I if I remember correctly, it's also a policy agent and has a webhook component of it. And Notary is is like how we're going to sign artifacts to make sure that the, like the supply chain is secure. And supply chain was like a again super hot topic probably last year and the year before. And some of that kind of dies down. It just goes in waves. Thank you. I'll. All of the policy language is Rego. Yeah, that's the Rego is the language for open policy agent. Um, let's like a lot of these over here, man, I can't even go through all of this. This is just so much stuff. Um, I'm going to call it some of the ones that I know, I guess, like Sysdig uh, is like the parent company of Falco um, and they have a product. Uh, Claire was a, a secure uh, container scanner. Um, so you could scan for vulnerabilities. Container SSH, that just seems like a bad idea all around, but I understand people do it. <laughs> uh, Tetragon is like the Cilium like level above security. So it's like, hey, we got your network. We can see if it's secure or not. Uh, Tigera is weird to me to have in here because Tigera has Calico, if I remember correctly, and Tigera like is the network. I don't, they probably have a security project that I don't really know about. Um, Dex is like an OIDC provider, came out of CoreOS. Uh, again, all of this stuff is is coming from somewhere. Someone uses it. Someone created it. Uh, Trivi came out of, I don't know why there's two, but again, it's probably two separate projects. If you're on the, the landscape, the interactive landscape, you'll be able to see what those projects actually go to. Here, you just get a logo. Automation and configuration. 
I don't know what Cube Edge does. <laughs> Just because I don't know. Uh, it probably does something with with managing clusters at in an edge environments, but I don't actually know what it does. Um, cloud custodian cleans up like cloud resources, so it's like oh that EBS volume is not being used anymore. The the PV inside of Kubernetes got deleted. We'll go ahead and clean that up too. Um, a lot of this stuff I don't know. Like OpenStack is like a super generic. Like I don't I don't know why that's here, but it probably does something. Uh, Pulumi is like a uh, infrastructure as code but as like generic codes so you can write python instead of writing terraform some of these make perfect sense to me like ansible that's just a generic uh config management tool terraform uh juju cf engine uh foreman is like a provisioning stack same with digital rebar maz um salt uh, these are all like, in there, there's Puppet. I was looking for Puppet. Um, these are all ways that you just run configuration management and configure things inside of your Linux OS or inside your infrastructure. Um, some of them will deploy higher level constructs. Some of them will deploy small. Oh, Bosch, that was the one out of the um, uh, Cloud Foundry. Uh, so like some of them are like, oh, there's AWS Cloud Formation. All right, so these are all just like ways you can configure things uh, and, and deploy them. I forgot Chef got... Did it get renamed to Chef Infra? Probably. Um, but yeah, so these are all things. But like, you also have things like uh, Linux Kit, which is Docker's Linux creation toolkits. Um, I don't see things like Packer in here. Maybe I missed it. Um, but yeah, there's there's various ways that you can configure things uh, for like I don't we haven't submitted our project. I work at Sidero Labs. We have Omni, um, which would probably fall in this case, I guess. I don't know. It depends on again. It's, I think you get one entry, and 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 that's all. Someone says this hurts imposter syndrome. They've been a data engineer and don't know most of this. Man, if I looked at a data engineering landscape, I can guarantee you I know nothing on that list. <laughs> it's not a <laughs> just whatever you're used to. When you've been living with it and, and testing a lot of these things and talking about a lot of these things for as long as I have, um, it kind of comes a little second nature. All right, key management. Uh, this is like, how do we secure secrets? I saw someone asking earlier, like, how do we make sure that secrets are secure? Um, Spiffy is a way of like validating that a, a process in a machine is who it says it is. And you need like some uh, trusted relationship between like if, uh, if I fire off an Nginx process, how do I make sure that that is legit? Uh, is, is that something that should exist? And you can go down this train of this chain of trust to say like, oh, that process is started by this other process, which started by this other process, which is started by this machines init system, which I know about because of this cloud provider's metadata. And you just like spiffy like looks at those things and says, oh yeah, I trust it. You're good. So um, Spire, I don't remember the difference here between Spiffy and Spire. They both kind of came out at the same time. Um, they're both semi-related in that they are doing this trust relationship, but I do not remember the details. Um, and then like there's common things that some people probably know about, like vaults is just like a secret management from HashiCorp. Uh, teleport is like a secure, um, uh, it's like SSH, uh, portal basically. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it better than that. Um, are some of these startups, Robert? Most of these are startups. Most of these are projects, uh, out of a startup or, or, uh, spun out from uh, a big company that had it. Uh, so container registry here, whoops, let's go container registry. This is just like, where are you storing your artifacts? Um, Harbor is, is a big one. Uh, Dragonfly came out of Alibaba, uh, which is a, uh, well, a distributed way of doing it. Um, like just for like Harbor, like this was, again, these are big things that have kind of come out over the time and they all had their moment in the sun of being uh, either a controversy or something interesting. Um, Portis was another one. Uh, Quay was, was CoreOS. Um, this is Docker distribution, which was their first foray into like making money. Literally like they're just like, Hey, we need to make money. We're going to charge you for this registry thing. Um, and they had an open source registry, but then they made this like really, really big convoluted distribution to like host containers. And it was kind of crazy. Um, and then you're going to get the hosted ones like IBM, ECR, Azure, 
uh, Google's, um, I can't read this one, but I'm assume I think that's a, a cloud provider as well. Uh, so yeah, like these are all just like, where do you store those artifacts? No problem. Uh, instead of going down a layer, I'm, we're almost, we're getting like through this already. Like this is, we're making some good progress. We've, we've already covered all of this of just like, these are people, um, down here. These are all like providers and other things. We'll go after in a little bit. Um, but over here, this is, uh, projects. Nope. Uh, application definition and development. Here we go. So this is like, like I said, we kind of move up the stack as we go. I need to take off my jacket. It's too hot now. I should probably also turn off my heater. My mic's still working. We're good. Hold on a sec. All right. So now we've moved up the stack into like application development and where uh, apps run or or do things. And, and this is where developers are probably like application developers more care, um, at least because they interface with some of this stuff. And so things like Helm, uh, which is notoriously the package manager for Kubernetes, uh, whether you agree with that or not, um, that they branded it that way. And that's where they've been for a long time. Backstage is like a development portal. Build packs is a way of like building containers without ever having uh, a Docker file. Um, build packs, uh, it was like a reverse engineering of Heroku, basically. <laughs> um, and if I remember correctly, Red Hat was was very much involved with the stuff they did with um, OpenShift. Um, Dapper, Cubevela. I think both those came out of Azure. If I remember, Kubevela might have been a startup, but Dapper definitely was out of Azure. Um, and it's like a, it's again, it's it's like let's make developers not think about containers as much. Um, Kubevert is a way of, which again, I don't know why this is here and not in runtime. Um, this seems like a runtime thing where it runs VMs. It like it it provisions VMs in Kubernetes. Is that application packaging? I don't know. I guess I, you could you could argue for it maybe. Uh, operator framework. Um, this was just basically like a, a level up of controllers. Originally came out of CoreOS and then uh, Red Hat bought them and now it's kind of a Red Hat thing. I feel like half of these are big cloud company services and half are obscure GitHub projects. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the, <laughs> you got the gist of it there. <laughs> um, that's, that's, not, that's not completely wrong. Um, there's a there's a middle ground of like funded GitHub projects uh, that that have like some sort of backing or or people behind it. Do you pronounce it Azure or Azure? Yeah. <laughs> um, Artifact Hub. Why is this here and not in Container Registry? I don't know. Again, these are just like you get you get to put yourself in there once, and depending on when you put it in, uh, like that's where it might stick. I'm sure you can. And the reason I'm putting this as part of fork it is this is all open source like you can pull request these things and and like when you need to add uh, a label or a, an icon you you add a pull request you fork the landscape oh did my mic my mic died thanks for letting me know that mic is is toast now can you still hear me like do i need a mic hopefully this is all right is it is it fully muted no i know it's delayed hold on Sorry, hold on. I'm doing this on on TikTok too because they ask more questions. Oh, you can hear me now. Cool. Thanks. I'm sorry if, the, if it's probably not as loud, but I had to unplug the mic because the battery died. Okay, so uh, going through this again, these are application level concerns. Um, Chef Habitat was an interesting sort of thing that Chef kind of came out with right around Kubernetes making its kind of like we're doing stuff now. Um, it was another way of like repackaging different, like anything. And then having this like orchestration thing without fully, fully buying into Kubernetes. Um, so it was this weird kind of middle ground, but, uh, as far as I know, it never really took off. Um, Monocle is a, is a, is a way of like linting and, and validating your YAML. GitHub is like a developer, uh, like remote, uh, environments. Um, similar to uh, code spaces that, that GitHub has, but self-hosted. Um, Docker Compose is one 
probably a lot of people know about. Uh, it's just, you know, it's here. Oh man, I totally forgot about Chi. Um, Eclipse Chi was like there, uh, was Eclipse as the, the IDE, uh, having a web, uh, based interview. I don't, what is going on here? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I think it says Kiwi maybe. I don't know. Um, Podman, I why that's here again. This is like a container orchestrate or a container runtime, but not a Kubernetes container runtime. This is a replacement for Docker. I don't know if that says kind. Maybe you're right. I could tell if I'm on the full thing, but that's the terrible logo. Um, so yeah, all these are like like if it runs on your laptop, maybe it, it fits in this <laughs> in this box. Um, oh, there's Packer. Why the heck is Packer over here? I have no idea. Uh, Tilts uh, was another like uh, Kubernetes developer um, thing. Docker bought it. Why there's a generic CNCF logo? I don't know. Again, go look at the the actual uh, interactive landscape. Uh, it's I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to read this real fast because I've been learning Japanese. So on premu, premu, on premu. Um, so I'm assuming a Japanese company has, has a thing called on-prem, uh, never heard of it. Um, man, I remember some of these, some of these were great. Like scaffold was really cool when it came out. Um, I remember Porter, I, I tested that out, uh, pretty neat. I'm assuming squish has something to do with glue because that's their same little logo. Uh, uh, no call host. It was another one that was like, we could, we can pull networking from Kubernetes or make it look like Kubernetes. Uh, co builds containers that are go apps came out of Google. Um, so a lot of the stuff just like it, it comes around, it's popular for a little while. It does something, it solves a problem and, and maybe someone adopts it. Um, this is a really weird three bar logo. I have no idea. Oh, telepresence. I knew I recognized that bird. Um, <laughs> oh, the open source broker API broker. The, the service broker was a thing that came out of, uh, What's her name? Cloud Foundry, the service broker. And it never caught on in Kubernetes. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sad. Um, but like we tried to do other things uh, instead of a service broker. And, and maybe we ended up in a better place, maybe not. Databases. There are some databases. Okay. And this is where like I would think etcd would have fallen here, but I understand it's kind of a coordination thing and has messaging. Um, but the, the CNCF projects are KV, uh, which I believe came out of Alibaba and Vitesse, uh, which was a MySQL project, which came out of YouTube. Um, and so this is just like distributed MySQL and that's a, a big key value store. Um, those are like the, the CNCF ones, but again, it's just because they were donated to the projects, but like all of this is just like generic databases. Um, you're going to see a lot of vendors, a lot of like there's Oracle um, and a lot of stuff that you've probably never heard of. And do you want to trust it with your data? Maybe um, this is probably going to tie closely to how you're getting your storage, uh, which was another section we just did before. Like MariaDB, SQL Server. Um, you'll, you'll know these. If you're familiar with d databases, there's Cassandra, Cockroach. Uh, there's MySQL. Redis. Oh, that's a touchy one. Uh, Neo4j. Uh, SAP. SAP database right there. There you go. Uh, so all this stuff is is just you can you can fork the landscape and you can add your project and you can just give us some information and some metadata and you can show up here too. Uh, integration. Oh, continuous integration delivery. Uh, Open Cruise, Captain Flux, and Argo. Um, man, I don't even. Where did Open Cruise come from? I don't remember this one. I don't remember Captain very well either. Um, Flux came out of WeWorks. Argo came out of Intuit, um, which are kind of these are like the the GitOps approach of it. Uh, GitOps as a term came out of WeWorks as they were building Flux and they had hosted Kubernetes clusters and that's how they started managing them. Um, and it, it's kind of it's a pull based model. If you go to open GitOps up IO, I think um, you'll you'll read all you'll read like the the major portions that make up GitOps because they defined it. But these are all CICD. There's a there's Jenkins. Um, there's going to be anything that's a CICD uh, pipeline or some deployment thing. T uh, two IQ uh, company's not around anymore. I don't know if the project is. Uh, and and some of this like again, 
yeah, and someone's just pointed out, you need a curator and editor, editor project for this page. Yeah, and like you can PR these things. Like if someone, if one of these projects is, is hey, we're, we're, we're archived, you can fork it and you can say, yep, this, this should go away. It's no longer a thing. Don't put it on the, on the landscape. So the hope was that like people would do that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Streaming and messaging. This page is at l.cncf.io. It's for landscape.cncf.io. Uh, Nats is the big one that kind of has been around for a long time. Um, Nats is, is a message queue and messaging system. Um, I remember as like a, it came out and was like, oh, you don't have to use Redis. You don't have to use Kafka. Um, you can use something that's a little lighter weight and a little more nimble for, for pushing into containers and running in containers. Um, Cloud events was a, is a, is a like working backwards, uh, from Lambda basically of like, how do we trigger things? And cloud events is, is what kind of came out of that and how those events get pushed into a messaging queue and then triggered somewhere, um, is, is kind of what that is. I have no idea what, uh, Strimzy is. Uh, but again, you're gonna if you're used to any sort of streaming, you're gonna see some usual names here like Kafka, Apache Storm, Apache Spark, um, Kinesis from AWS. These are all fairly common things. There's RabbitMQ, man, I haven't heard that one for a long time. Uh, these are all just like message queuing systems, and and that's what this whole section is about. So we we did it. We're, we're like almost all the way through this whole thing. We got some observability. What's this called down here? Observability and analysis section. And again, like observability had its own hot topic sort of uh, moment in the sun for for cloud native. Uh, some of the early projects um, were things like Prometheus, which came, uh, which was like inspired by uh, what was in which was internal to Google. Um, Fluent D and Fluent Bit were really early on with their streaming. And Fluent D is like the, the Ruby based one. Fluent Bit is the C based one. So like performance, but less features. Um, and then a lot of these are kind of like have, have become standards or become projects because so many people wanted a standard to go against. So like open metrics and open telemetry, a lot of things kind of collapsed into those as like, here's the protocol we use and we're compliant with open telemetry because. Uh, putting telemetry that was one vendor was really, really hard to like work your way out of. But if you've ever run infrastructure and you needed monitoring, you'll probably recognize some of these things. Um, like Sentry is for application crashes. Um, what is like Splunk uh, is the one that everyone loves giving money to. <laughs> Logly, uh, Sumo Logic, Logic Monitor. These are all, you know, Logging, logging and monitoring platforms. Uh, Alibaba Cloud has one. CloudWatch, um, Logstash. Logstash used to have a different, a different brand. It had like a, a log with a mustache. I, I like that one. I like that uh, logo. Um, yeah, but these are like if you're if you're there's Grafana. That's the the Grafana stack. Um, is is one that's pretty common for a lot of people. Uh, what is this supposed to spell? GT. Wait, Grafana Tempo. I thought. Oh, it looks good to me. That's what LGMT. That's what they wanted their um, they wanted their their names to be. So it looks good to me. Out of order on this, of course, but that's fine. Uh, I'm wondering if things like Scope are still around because WeWorks isn't isn't around anymore. What's up, Scott? Uh, Scott. Um, I had to tell you, I was going to make a video. I'm getting the, the printer you recommended the P P one S P one D, whatever one it's, it's arriving today. But right now we're just walking through the CNCF. Uh, Zabbix is a really popular one for self-hosting. I don't see where's Nagios. Uh, it's gotta be on here somewhere. Oh man. Gray log bringing back some memories. Graphite. Ooh, I hated graphite. Um, I, I replaced more graphite than I installed. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There's Honeycomb. Hubble is the um, Cilium project. Um, oh, and then you have some like databases in here, like Open TSDB is is database. Should that be in the database section? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, well, 
it's up to you. There's, you know, Datadog, uh, which I, I really like if you can afford it. Um, Pixie's really cool. It does like EVPF scripts. Um, it's one that I've wanted to dig into more. Influx Data. Again, they have Influx DB. Influx Data is like the project on top of it. So that's monitoring continuous optimization. And this is kind of like that, like a uh, almost uh, testing in production sort of area where you're like, Hey, you can make sure, and you can benchmark things as they're, as you're working on them, as they run in production and then make sure that they run optimally. Um, and some of that's optimal running is, is a tied to how much it costs, because if you're in a cloud provider, you're paying for it if it's not optimal. And, and so that's where things like infracrost cost, open cost and cube cost come in um, because those are like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to lower your cost because this is an OPEX spend. So the, the worse your application performs, the, the more you're going to spend. And so you can pay us money and we will save you money. That's how it works. Uh, but there's various other things. There's like these scaling projects like cast AI, perfect scale. Um, these are ways of, of figuring out if you can run things on spot or save money in some way. Chaos engineering. I feel like they had a very short time in the limelight and probably for good reason. Um, not everyone should be doing this, <laughs> um, but chaos engineering is like, let's break stuff and then see what happens so we can make sure it's resilience. Um, Gremlin was kind of the big startup that was doing this for at least from what I remember. Um, they were, they were doing a ton of this pushing and, and allowing you to be a little more, uh, a little more measured about what you were breaking <laughs> and feature flagging. And this is like, how do we like roll different versions of our application again? Like, why is this down here in, oh, wait a minute, hold on. TikTok's making me val verify I'm human in the middle of a stream. There we go. Did, uh, did Prometheus, Prometheus came out of the people from SoundCloud for sure. Yes, you are right. But it was inspired by the thing from Google. And I don't remember what the thing at Google was called. Um, if I remember correctly, I, th I think that was it. But you are absolutely right that it was SoundCloud folks. That I think they came from Google. They went to SoundCloud and like, we need the measure. We want the monitoring thing that we had at Google uh, or the metrics thing. And that's also where things like the um, the health or the yeah, health Z. Health Z endpoint came out of Google. Um, that was all like a Googleization thing. Uh, but so feature flagging, um, there's open feature, which is kind of like this open telemetry thing where it's like, Hey, we want a standard on how this stuff works. And it's like, Hey, you can, you can roll out an application and then turn on the feature and you do that with a flag. And you, like, you don't want to, uh, roll it out with the feature enabled. You want to roll it out and then validate certain things and then you can turn it on. So yeah, feature flags are, again, I, that's probably should go up higher in this landscape. Um, but there we go. We, we did, we did all of the major parts of the CNCF landscape in what time is it? In about, right about an hour. That's great. Um, that, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, let's, let's dive into the, like the newer sections, which are at the bottom. Uh, and again, all that red in there is, is like people that pay money to the CNCF. <laughs> Um, certified partners and providers. And this is like, Hey, if someone's going to host this for you in some form, it doesn't matter what the form is. If they're like, we have a thing that implements that thing that we just told you about, um, it's going to fall into here. And, and there's like these the platform here's certified Kubernetes distributions. All of these things are just like, we have Kubernetes, uh, obviously things like AWS, K3S, um, RKE and Rancher, why they're both, I don't know, Red Hat and Red Hat OpenShift. Um, all of these things are just like, we make Kubernetes. Uh, Typhoon, awesome projects um, from uh, Darren. Uh, is that his name? D Hubble? I think it was his. Uh, anyway, uh, came from CoreOS, uh, was doing stuff that was like the last remaining like remnants of what CoreOS was doing um, when it got bought by. Uh, Red Hat, um, but Typhoon's still around. I think it does stuff on Fedora now too. Uh, virtual cluster, um, like there's a random Lenovo logo. They probably build Kubernetes. Who knows why? Um, D2IQ, which again, I believe was bought by um, Nutanix. Uh, Microkates out of Ubuntu. Oracle has the thing. Ericsson, yes, the phone company has a Kubernetes thing. Desktop Kubernetes, that is the most generic name I've ever seen. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, and here's, okay, so this is hosted Kubernetes. So the last one was like, we will give you the bits. We have some open source project that'll give you those bits. And these are all like, you can pay us money and we will run the Kubernetes thing. Um, obviously all the cloud providers, um, Orca is an interesting one because there's that's like a Mac-based platform, uh, but it gives you a Kubernetes interface if you need a Mac uh, for builds or something. And then certified Kubernetes installers. Um, some of the ones in here are interesting to me, like COPS. That's where COPS falls in. COPS was like the way you could run Kubernetes in Amazon before EKS. Uh, and, and, oh, look, there's me. There's Sidero. Um, okay, now I know where I am. <laughs> Uh, Sidero, we have Omni, which will which will do the installer bits for you. Um, so again, it's not a provisioner, but it's like, hey, we'll install this wherever you're trying to to run it. Um, and that's the you know it fits right along the line with Rancher. Uh, there's Kind. Someone was looking for Kind earlier. Uh, I guess that other logo wasn't Kind. Um, it's down here because it runs it locally. Again, that's probably should be up in the developer stack, but maybe not. Gardener um, is another one that can kind of like provision these cluster. Is Cubes. Oh, there's cube spray. I was looking for a cube spray on there. Mini cube, local. Um, some of these I know, some of them I don't. Cube clipper. All right. Um, I don't remember what the difference is that you'll see. Some of the some of the boxes are like a darker shade. Some are white. Some are shaded. Um, if you're on the interactive uh, landscape at again l.cncf.io, um, you'll probably figure it out from there. Um, there might be some color coding going on. What is this? Oh, and these are uh, platform as a service or container as a service. Uh, I'm assuming something like cloud runs in here somewhere. Um, if it ever got pushed in here, I don't know. Platform as a service, I don't see it. Clever cloud, no code. Uh, I'm assuming that's not the Kelsey uh, Git repo. If it is, that's amazing. <laughs> um, but these are like, hey, I don't even see like Heroku in here. Oh, there it is. There's Heroku. Um, so yeah, this is like run my container. I don't care if I has Kubernetes or not. Um, but I would think that like Cloud Run would be in here. Um, uh, App Runner would be in here. Uh, Azure has, uh, what are they called? Container, application containers. Um, I'm surprised I don't see them. Knative is in the other section as a project, but, but Cloud Run as an implementation of Knative, I would assume would be under that section. Uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes certified service providers. Uh, again, these are all the companies you can pay money and they will help you do something with one of these projects. <laughs> there's there's going to be a lot of those. Uh, that's that whole, that's the whole width. Um, you get to go that whole width over here. Um, you're all pink. These are all people you can pay money um, and they will uh, do something with Kubernetes or cloud native for you. We are almost done. We're almost done. Serverless. Uh, this ties in a little bit to some of the section we had before with orchestration, because this does orchestrate things. Um, but these are some of these are hosted. Some of them are like the projects that implement some of those things. So you'll see your normal. Oh, I bet this is where Cloud Run is, isn't it? No, they have Cloud Functions. Oh, yeah, Cloud Functions. And well, that's way big now. Uh, they have Cloud Functions and Cloud Run here, which I'm surprised Cloud Run's not in the paths. Um, but like Azure Functions, AWS Lambda, makes sense, right? Like these are all things that exist. Um, Huawei has a function service. IBM Cloud has a code engine and Cloud Functions. Um, but things like Netlify. Netlify has a functions uh, interface that you can have with your site. It's great. Um, that makes sense. Uh, Versal, Twilio. Uh, they all have, oh, there's cloud for workers. I was looking for that one. Most of those are like hosted services. And then there's Oracle functions. Uh, you'll get things like, there's Alibaba. I'm looking for, like, this is FX, Tencent Cloud. Oh, these that's why I'm looking at hosted platforms. I'm sorry. Uh, these are serverless, but that's the hosted section. I was like, where's the projects? There we go. Installable platforms for serverless. Um, this is Keda and Knative um, are kind of the big ones here. Um, Fission and OpenFaz, uh, shout out to uh, OpenFaz for being around for so long uh, doing this. Cubeless was one. Um, there's Fission. FX was on the other one. I didn't know if they had that as an open. Uh, Wasm Cloud, you can like host Wasm uh, stuff here. Uh, Apache OpenWhisk. Um, Virtual Cubelet, did you, did you get in here twice? Virtual Cubelet was up in the top too. And I thought this was a one-time thing. Maybe they have another project. 
Uh, who knows? Uh, Dapper's in here twice. So maybe it is you. Maybe you can be in here twice. Uh, frameworks. Uh, these are the serverless frameworks. And these are like, how are you going to build your functions and or package them? So things like SST um, is a is a, a project and uh, ties in with a hosted platform. Um, they had a great blog post recently about uh, moving off of CloudFormation uh, and moving over to, I believe it was Pulumi, if I remember correctly. Um, for, for provisioning their stuff, but like AWS SAM, if you're used to Lambda, um, you're probably going to be used to that serverless, the other framework, um, that came out with Lambda, um, and has been doing a lot more since then tools. What does this mean? No idea. I, I don't, I, but they, we're looking at the landscape. I don't know what this means. Uh, stackery. And okay, so this is still serverless because I got serverless devs, Stackery. Stackery is like a was Stackery was bought by Amazon, if I remember correctly. And it's like integrated as like a UI element now. Um, this is a weird like whale that has a lambda symbol in it. Um, sure. Node lambda. So these are, I don't know, tools for building serverless, serverless security. <laughs> AKA there isn't any. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't live long enough to matter. So people, it just doesn't matter. <coughs> Man, these allergies in Southern California are great. Okay. Let's, let's zoom back out over here. Is this another section? It's gotta be. Was this? This is the Wasm section. Oh, okay, so this is all WebAssembly. All right, so this is let's leave the container world behind and we're moving into WebAssembly. We get Dapper for a third time <laughs> and Knative for a third time. Look at that. Oh, look, Kubernetes again. Um, and all, like all this stuff is repeated. Like this is just the same thing over again because it also works with Wasm. Like, why is Istio a Wasm thing? It uses Wasm to extend uh, Envoy. Envoy is already here. What does Istio do? I don't know. It can route things to Wasm functions. All right. Again, like maybe this doesn't need to exist, but someone wanted it here. There was some political thing that's like, hey, this has to exist. Put it in there. Um, sure, we can show that this this works. And the old, if I look at mine, hold on. If if I look at my physical uh, landscape, I got. I got serverless over here, which was its own little landscape. It had a mini landscape as part of the big, big one. Um, but I don't remember. There was no WASM when I did mine. Members. See, like, here's all the members section. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there's no there was no WASM on mine from three years ago. Um, yes, I do really have that printed out. <laughs> I have to look what version it is. Um, okay, so we're in this embedded functions. And this is like every, every, every way that you can get an embedded function. Again, some of this doesn't make any sense. It's fine. Um, like why Nginx, Nginx, part of F5. I don't, what is, why is OPA down here? Is, is OPA, is it running WASM functions? I don't know. Um, languages, what? <laughs> This, this is the most bizarre thing right here. Languages. Like we, we know that you can write languages and they can compile to WASM. Okay. Does that need to be on a landscape? I don't think so. Oh. Application frameworks. Hey, look, it's Dapper again. Dapper is everywhere on this thing. There's what the uh, web assembly, that logo, um, spin. I don't know what this spider is. It's kind of neat. Um, VS code. What? Wait a minute. We have WebAssembly twice in the same section. <laughs> Who's doing this again? If you're on the interactive landscape, it, it's going to point to some other project, but it's just not everything has a logo. Um, so yeah, so take that. Every one of these icons doesn't mean something different. Orchestration and management of, again, we're in the WebAssembly section. 
cryo can do it container d can do it docker can do it um but like can kubernetes do it technically no kubernetes isn't the runtime for it right so it's like kubernetes is an orchestration piece why is it here i don't know maybe this this points to another project inside of it um this is weird this has to be a rust container look at that rust container crab um that you know that's rust uh that's cool um uh, <laughs> runtimes there's the crustlets wasm cloud i don't know that looks like something my my kids drew um which i think is great like go with it i'm not a great artist there we go look at this tooling web assembly web assembly web assembly web assembly <laughs> i don't know what this folder looking logo is either but it's everywhere um, oh, there's another web. I bet that one's on here the most. This logo, the WA logo has to be on here the most. There's the folders again, hosted platforms. Uh, if you want to run WebAssembly, uh, Azure, AKS, apparently AKS can do WebAssembly out of the box. Fastly can do it. Uh, Fairmon, Fair, Fair, now I can't read it. That's weird. Um, hosted decentralized platforms okay i don't okay i don't know what that actually means look at it okay here right here get <laughs> four web assembly focus <laughs> in ai and machine learning that's great four of them uh plus ffmpeg hold on hold on <laughs> who put ffmpeg in ai machine learning <laughs> that i don't i don't know if that's the biggest troll ever or brilliant um i'm gonna have to go look at the landscape after i close this uh, but like this section right here this is gonna blow up like in the next year because right now is the ai machine learning time to shine and so everyone's looking at ai machine learning so this section i guarantee you it's one two three four five six seven projects right now and four of them are the same <laughs> and it'll be 50 by the end of the year because that's just how these things go uh, debugging observability. Again, this is like well, the WASM debugging observability. Not a lot. If you're trying to build WASM observability stuff right now, like mm, it's probably going to be tough. And one of them is our fellow WA uh, <laughs> project. Edge and bare metal web assembly. I don't know why flat car is here. I should, I should read up on what flat car is a web assembly thing because they, it like comes with Docker and maybe they like package the web assembly Docker runtime. Um, by default, I don't know. Oh, and we skipped the packaging registries and application delivery. Um, Harbor, again, it's a container, it's a registry. It's here twice. Oh, but this is for web, this is for web assembly. So it can also do, excuse me. It can also do that. Uh, Docker on Docker hub, you can store web assembly artifacts. And that is it folks. That is, that is the entire thing. We like went through everything, hour and a half. But wait, what was I, I was gonna look up something. Oh, I was gonna look up the interactive guide um, and see, let's go, where are you? CNCF landscape, let's scroll down. Again, we're in the interactive area. Where's WebAssembly? Oh, it's in a different order. Wait, member certified, cert WASM, there we go. Okay, so I want to see what is this one? Winter JS. Oh, Wasmer. Okay, Wasmer. That's their logo. Um, so they have a bunch of different projects under that as like a thing. Because um, if I look over here, this is gonna be a different Wasmer project, probably. I don't know. Maybe not. Someone is screaming outside of my window. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's the same logo, a bunch of different projects. Uh, Wabbit, <laughs> it's a good name. Asyncify, all right. So that's that's why that's the way it is. Where was I gonna look at uh, flat car? I don't know. So it's just like generically, it supports WASM somehow. Um, probably, like I said, probably because they build it into the, into the container runtime that comes with the OS. <laughs> What was this spider? Spider lightning. Okay, out of Microsoft. Very apt logo. <laughs> uh, and where, where, FFmpeg, where did it go? Where was the AI? Uh, 
Was that AI part of Wasm? It was. But wait. AI machine learning. FFmpeg. What? What is going on here? I don't. I don't know. I don't. I honestly do not know why <laughs> FFmpeg is oh a web assistant. Can you wait a minute? I'm so confused. I'm so, anyway, I'm not going to dig into it. <laughs> It can do something with WebAssembly and AI. So sure, why not? All right. How do I, do I switch back? There we go. Cool. So if you made it through all of that, uh, thank you. Um, it was fun. It was uh, it was a, a trip down some, some of it memory lane, some of it's uh, uh, brand new stuff like FFmpeg um, doing AI stuff. Cool. Why not? Oh, and I should also point out that, again, it's, it is open source. So if you go to the CNCF landscape um, on the very top right corner, there's a GitHub link and it goes out to just GitHub CNCF slash landscape. And that's where you make your pull requests. If you found anything in there that doesn't exist or you wanted to add something, um, go go at it. Um, they currently have nine pull requests um, for various projects that are being updated and added to the project. I just opened it right now. So uh, that's that is why this is kind of part of open source. Um, you can use FFmpeg to actually transcribe recordings with OpenAI's Whisper. And does that get implemented as a WASM module? I was just like, that whole like section is so confusing to me. Um, but that's cool. So thanks. Thanks for looking it up. Um, but yeah, so thanks for thanks for coming and watching. And hopefully this was was helpful in some way. If you're new to the CNCF and this landscape, again, it's it's crazy uh and 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 like just convoluted and like how all this got here um, but if you look back over the history for the last 10 ish years kubernetes turns 10 this year cncf is also turning 10 this year um it all kind of it's like hey we we've grew out of one project we needed to solve another problem and a bunch of stuff spun out to make it happen so that's how we got here so thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you again soon